Hello, I'm Michael Fudge. I'm here to give you a quick tutorial on how to draw logical data models in diagrams.net slash draw.io. So what you see on the screen right now is a conceptual data model. And I will be drawing the logical data model on this page. And because we need to go back and forth, and that's kind of silly, I'm just going to grab a screenshot of this conceptual model. Normally you wouldn't do this. And I'm just going to paste it here on the other page so that I can get a better feel for what I'm doing. And you can visualize a little better what's happening. So there's my conceptual model. And I will, underneath this, draw the logical model. So first thing, uh, when you map a conceptual model to a logical model, is you want to map over the entities. And you can see right here that I have uh, one, two, three different entities. All right, so let's start there. And this is a, a table. This is a table with a composite primary key. What we need here is just a regular table. So I'll bring over one for student, one for subject, and one for college. And then the table should be plural. So this is going to be students, right? Because this is an entity. But this down here, a table, which consists of many entities. So I have students, subjects, now let's not even pay attention to the merits of this diagram and you know if this is conceptually correct we're just going to actually map exactly what you see here whether or not it makes the correct database or not irrelevant for our demonstration now for this uh, particular example i will bring over primary keys um, after i do the attribute so let's do the attributes here i have name required composite so i should break that up into um, students first name, student last name, and then I need um, a username, which is like their login. So student username, and that is required. So uh, all, actually all of these are required, so I should make them bold. Bold, I can go over here and do bold if I want. Right, I could do that, but I'm actually hitting control B on the keyboard to speed that up. And then over here, I need to make this a unique constraint for username. So U1. Why the one? Because you could have three unique constraints in the same table. So you want to make sure that you designate that they're separate unique constraints. If I did this, U1, U1, <clears throat> together, these two columns are part of the same unique constraint. If I do U1, U2, they're two different unique constraints. That's why you number your constraints. Every constraint other than the primary key constraint gets numbered. So I need to make uh, an extra row in here. So the way you do this is you click twice and see how it highlights. Um, if you want, if you see, it highlights both cells, right? All right, and then after you do that, you hit Control D and it will make a duplicate. And then I can put in my student GPA here, student GPA. Now that is not required and I don't have a unique constraint there. So I'll just get rid of that. So I have mapped over students. Now, what am I going to choose for primary key? I could choose student username and use that, but usernames might change. So instead, I'm going to use a surrogate. Perfect. Let's do the other one. So subject code, subject name. Subject code, subject name. These are both required. I don't need this row, so I'm going to click it twice like that and then I hit delete okay, if you if you click it once and hit delete it, it doesn't get rid of the entire row it only gets rid of the text that was in the row so you have to click on it twice to make sure you covered the entire row then you hit delete and it goes away okay and then let's just have a subject ID here subject ID so like you know student majors in accounting right accounting has many students majoring in it and then over here, accounting belongs to a college, right? It's offered by a college. So over here, I'm going to have um, just go college ID for that primary key. If it ends in ID, the convention is it's a surrogate key. Then I have name, college name, the Smith School of Law, for example. And let's make that a unique constraint. And then the address is composite. So it might have, like for campus, you might have office, and then building 
And that's usually enough for a campus address, right? You don't need zip code and things like that. You know, we're just gonna keep it simple. And these are required, so I should um, make these bold. All right, there you have it. So I've mapped the entities to tables. And I've also mapped the attributes inside the entities to columns. So I'm getting there. Now I need to do the tough part, which is mapping the relationships and then in turn mapping the foreign keys. So let's start with an easy one. We'll do this one to many over here. See, if you look at this one on this side over here, it's uh, one many, right? This cardinality is one and only one. This cardinality is um, one or more. So together, the overall cardinality um, of this relationship is one to many. So when you map a one to many, the foreign key goes on the many side. So the many side is over here, which when you think about it, it makes sense. One college has many subjects. <clears throat> the business school might have an accounting and a finance major. They might have two different subjects that they offer, accounting and finance. So I need to add over here a column that's going to be the foreign key. So I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it. And then let's unbold it for now. And the name of this, the convention, would be Subject College ID, right? A foreign key should be represented as the primary key in a different table. That's why it's called a foreign key. And this one's in the subjects table. So that is that, then I'm going to label it FK1. Why FK1? There could be a couple of foreign keys in this table, right? So just label it FK1. That handles the many side. Now you have to handle the one side, right? So the foreign key goes on this side, right? Foreign key goes right, oh, I did that wrong. Foreign key goes here, goes on the met right there. Now you have to handle this guy over here. What does that do? This one and only one tells you whether or not the foreign key is nullable or not. So should we allow null or not over here? Uh, because it's one and only one, what it says is if you insert a row with a subject over here, then you must have a college. You can't insert a subject that, I don't know what the college is, right? So it has to have a value. That's what one and only one is saying. Therefore, I need to make this bold because I want to allow not null. I want to not allow null, I should say. Okay, the last thing you do is point the arrow um, from the foreign key back to the primary key like so. Back. Now it has my old line ends from when I was doing you know, conceptual modeling, but that's fine, it's easy to change these. You just go over here and pick uh, this end, should be an arrow. And I don't like that arrow, I like this arrow better. And then this other end should just be empty, like that. And so there you have it. So, so the arrow points towards the referring table's primary key, and then the tail of the arrow uh, is hooked up to the foreign key row. So when you look at this, you know, if it wasn't obvious enough what the foreign key was, right? <laughs> if it wasn't obvious enough that subject college ID, right, and college ID are the primary and foreign key pair, the arrow, the arrow tells you that, right? If you follow the arrow, you can figure that out. All right. Good. Now let's do this many-to-many -many relationship. Well, if you tr if you try to follow the same heuristic and you say, let's take the subject um, primary key and put it in student, let's take the student primary key and put it in subject, you can't do that. So you need to build an, an intermediary table called a bridge table. So when you're doing this in Draw.io, there's a, this guy here makes it easier to build a bridge table. So you add this one here. Now the convention of a bridge table is um, if you don't know what to, you could call this majors, right? Right, because that's the business rule. Or it could be student subjects. If majors doesn't make sense, student subjects works. But I like majors because you know this tells you what the, who the majors are. Okay, um, and then basically this uh, many to many does not have any attributes, so these are all going to go away. Although we could argue that this is not really a true many-to-many. -many. There are very few true many-to-many -many relationships conceptually. Um, this, you, you know, when did you become that major? That might be useful to capture, right? So a date. But let's just pretend like it doesn't exist. So I'm gonna just um, delete these out. Okay, it's just a regular bridge table. And now I have to bring in the foreign keys. So this would be major student ID, and this would be major subject 
ID. And then likewise, I need to, let me move these things around here. And we'll stick majors right over here. All right, now put this right there. And then what I want to do here is run another arrow like this. And then this one is student ID, so it goes, oh, I got it backwards, don't I? Yeah, I do that. So I want to run an arrow this way up to there like that. And then I want to run another arrow out the back to subject. And I need to move this one. Sometimes it's a little bit of playing around to get the arrows to do what you want. OK, there we go. So now I have my logical model built. So conceptually, if I go back up here, let me zoom it out just a whisker. OK, I have student has many majors. So one student, many majors. A subject has many uh, students in that major. So subject, many students in the major. So many to many. I represent that with a bridge table. And then this one over here is one to many, and I represent that with a foreign key. And then this tells me, this over here tells me that I want to have, um, you know, this is required over here. So in a many to many relationship, it really is as simple as just combining the two foreign keys together into a composite primary key that represents um, the primary key of the bridge table. That's that's basically it. But more importantly than the mapping rules themselves is the mechanics of how to do it in Draw.io. Basically, in the entity relationship uh, section of Draw.io, you want to you wanna use this guy here, right? That's a, just a regular table. And then this, this one over here is used for bridge tables. And then just a regular old arrow like this one over here is perfect. That's all you need. And that's it. That's basically conceptual to logical modeling mapping going on in Draw.io, and more importantly, how to draw the actual logical model. Okay, thank you. Have fun doing it. Bye.